All right, I want a guide to everything banned in China. Let's check it out. Every year, the human rights NGO Freedom House publishes a report on internet freedom around. Okay, so USA is posting a freedom now. The world. 65 countries are assessed, and in the most recent report, the People's Republic of China ranks an impressive last place. What? This is because of what is called the Great Firewall. One of what? Wait, freedom? Last place? What's no way? But they invented TikTok, guys. TikTok of all things. TikTok's a fairly free platform, right? Guys? The world's largest and most comprehensive lists of restricted websites, apps, images, and phrases. Everything included cannot be viewed by internet users in China. Yeah, guys, they, they got their own version, like, of the apps that are banned in the in, in China, guys. China. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google, YouTube, Snapchat, Tumblr, Twitch, and Pinterest. Every major media platform in the West is blocked. Even Twitch? What the heck? Other banned websites include most pornography sites, the BBC, online gambling sites, Amazon, the New York Times, and Discord. What? Dang, bro. I swear they have everything. There's even... I swear they have everything, and a bro. handy website where you can check if your site is blocked. And it isn't only the big league sites that get banned. Pro-democracy and anti-censorship sites are also restricted, no matter how small they are. Not Dang, bro, how do they go? How do they filter all this stuff? Just by the wording or something? First of all, there's not many sites that, like, um, there are for this, bro. Like, small, small websites and stuff? Like, for the most part, we just go to, like, social media websites to consume, like, information, guys. You know what I mean? Not all of these are... So, so I wonder how China does it. Banned per se, but made extremely difficult to access. Restricted websites may be moved to page 10 of search results, have their loading speed throttled, or may only partially load. But it yeah, bro. I be having websites do that nowadays. It isn't just websites that get blocked. Words, phrases, and images can all be restricted either temporarily or permanently. What? Just regular words. One of the most highly censored topics is any information about the Tiananmen Square Massacre of 1989. Any mention of the event is prohibited. Guys, that's a huge event, bro. That's, I don't even know what happened to it. We gotta watch another video essay on it. I don't even know what happened about the phrases it. Phrases like Tankman and 4th of June are banned from being searched or sent over instant messages. I thought it was 4th of July, guys. But no, 4th of June. The phrase Big Yellow Duck was banned in 2013 after pranksters edited a photograph of Tankman to feature some giant ducks. Oh my gosh. Guys, was he, uh. Was he killed by the government or something, guys? And this editing program, it's Photoshop, but it looks like GIMP almost. The 4th of June is humorously known as Chinese Internet Maintenance Day because many websites become slow or stop working entirely in the days leading up to the anniversary, all under the guise of scheduled server repair. But why, bro? <laughs> Movies and TV shows- Hey, bro, after just one event, guys? Sheesh. USA celebrates one event like that, but- we don't. We celebrate like our war, our days of where we had wars and stuff. You know, like Independence Day and stuff, right, guys? Was released in China need to be vetted and potentially edited to fit propaganda rules and decency guidelines. The 2012 James. Don't quote me on that. I apologize. James Bond film Skyfall had to have a scene removed where a Chinese security guard is killed, while Men in Black 3 was edited to remove scenes showing a Chinese restaurant worker actually being an alien. Anything that shows China or a Chinese person or dictatorships or authority in a bad light is cut before a Chinese release. Also, anything Lugbit related or scenes that are either too violent or too sexual. As you can imagine, audiences were left very confused at the Freddie Mercury film. Other banned media include Plague Inc., Battlefield 4, the film Seven Years in... Damn, I'm sure there's like, like streaming websites and stuff, guys. I'm sure there is, man. There's gotta be. Tibet, can't imagine why. South Park, ASMR videos, movies where what animals... What kind of ASMR video is that? Oh my gosh. 
That was a wild ASMR talk, movies including time travel and the Big Bang Theory. At least they're doing something right. Contra- hey, guys, I never watched Rory that to show. I never was a fan of Big Bang Theory. Where you guys let me know in the comments below. Your belief. Winnie the Pooh is not banned in China. Internet searches for Pooh Bear were temporarily blocked in 2017 when Chinese political dissidents discovered the hilarious fact that the president of China, Xi Jinping, looks like the character. Uh, partially, yeah, but not, not that much, guys. Later still, in <laughs> February 2018, when party officials... That was a little bit too much, right, guys? ...agreed to give Xi the presidency for the rest of his life, numerous search phrases were temporarily banned to stop people complaining about the rule change. These phrases include 10,000 years, disagree, shameless... Hey, bro, just some regular vocabulary words as well, man. What is going on? Personality, lifelong, and the letter N, the letter N being used in mathematics to denote any number. When the dissidents rage, are you serious, bro? Come on now. <laughs> it subsided. These what if somebody has homework they got to do, right, guys? Restrictions were, of course, lifted. However, I'm sure they 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 better be. Some bro. things you would expect to. Be uh, they might as well just like uh, be banned. Never. Aren't. The English Wikipedia page for the Tiananmen Square Massacre is unblocked. 1984. Yeah, so they still were allow, allow like reporting and stuff. Or by George Orwell is completely legal and uncensored. The Mad Max films were rejected from cinema release, but you can get them on DVD or VHS. Oh, okay, okay. Looks like a cool movie. Guys, never seen it though. The same with Back to the Future. The What's wrong with Back to the Future, guys? <laughs> There's nothing anti-China on that one, right, guys? Being that the tiny percentage of people who actually seek out a DVD are politically insignificant, and the number of Chinese people who can actually read or speak English is a very small percent of the population. Yeah, bro. Not compared to other countries, though. But that's because they have more population. 0.9%, though, wow. Peppa Pig is legal and insanely popular for some reason, despite an otherwise total ban on talking animals in media. James Cameron's Avatar, which shows a native population rising up against a colonialist force, is only illegal in 2D. Cinemas were allowed to show the film in 3D, with Communist Party officials hoping that the viewers would be so amazed by the visuals that they wouldn't pay attention to the message. They were right but only because Avatar is a completely forgettable film. What? No, bro. It's not... Uh, uh, guys, I'm a huge fan of Avatar, guys. So why keep these things... Take that back, mister. Take that back. ...out in the open. Why ban the letter N, which could be used for political dissent, but not a book or a movie that is actually about political dissent? Because otherwise, you'd have nothing to lose they probably just like the movie, right guys? They're like, oh snap, this movie's actually good. I want other people to listen to it, man. You know what I mean? ...if you were to rebel. For party officials, the goal is to give the illusion of political pluralism, just enough to make sure that people don't think they're being restricted. Now, all of this can be circumvented by using a VPN, which encrypts data and bypasses the firewall. There are plenty of Chinese people on Twitter, from government shills to anime artists, and 29% of Chinese people have used a VPN in the past month. Another problem the Chinese government faces is when Chinese citizens go abroad. Yeah, they're just VPNing to use Twitter. Not bad, not bad. VPNs have a use here, guys. Sorry guys, I'm just untangling my... <laughs> my headphone cord, man. It's so tangled up, man. I gotta get a new pair of headphones. Unlike the similarly oppressive North Korea, Chinese citizens are free to travel and study in many Western countries, which may expose them to other viewpoints that they'll bring back and spread around the country. The solution is to set up an almost alternative digital ecosystem, a protective bubble that Chinese citizens don't need or don't want to venture outside of. Bro, totalitarian, is it? For example, I think it's totalitarianism, guys. WeChat, which has made itself the single most important app for any modern Chinese citizen. 
It's a messaging app, a social media, a money transfer app. See, look, all this stuff, bro. Since when does Facebook have money transferring? They do actually, but... Gaming, <laughs> maps, reviews. It even has apps within the app to keep users inside at all times. This is good because it can also be used for surveillance and control. What about live streaming? With tracking software included in... Uh, so one app for everything? We don't have to have like 20 different or 10 different apps? I gotta post my freaking reels on four different platforms, guys. ...in the code and politically charged messages being automatically deleted. It's no surprise that the CEO of the company behind WeChat is a card-carrying member of the ruling Communist Party. There is also a Chinese equivalent to... Uh, wh why wouldn't he be, guys? You know what I mean? Google, Amazon, and Facebook. When visiting the West... When you create a, a huge uh, app like that, I'm sure there's no reason why you wouldn't. ...to study or travel, there's no... I wonder if the Nintendo Switch is banned, though. ...need to watch Western media at the hotel, or get Western social media when studying in the USA. All the comforts of home are right there on your phone. Or you could even sidestep the foreign travel entirely by visiting one of China's many replicas of famous monuments. Why visit France heck? with its smelly French people, foreign languages, and long plane ride when you can just visit the replica in Tiangdicheng? Bro, <laughs> yeah. Or visit That'd be cool. the much bigger guys. We should visit China. Bigger, much more impressive Tower Bridge replica in Jiangsu or the even more leaning Tower of Pisa in Shanghai. Are they going to have the Statue of Liberty, though? Hi. Hey, look, they're even building a copy of the Holocaust. There is also the supposed social credit system, where citizens are given a score which rises or falls based on how they live their lives. Positive actions like hard work or loyalty to the regime are rewarded. Negative actions like paying bills late or jaywalking loses you. Guys. Social credit system is such like a buzzword, even in the USA, right guys? Two points and privileges, like the ability to board a plane. Alas, this system does not exist. It was a what? single proposal by the central government in 2013. It doesn't exist, guys, no way. ...and has yet to be acted on at all. Head on over to China and ask them what their social credit score is, and you'll be greeted with a blunt... Guys, we have one. We have like a credit score. It's tied to all purchases. Huh? Or what? So at least China isn't as bad as that. Is there any hope for the dissidents of the regime? Yes. Using encrypted messaging apps like Signal, a network of ordinary people quietly share around banned articles and resistance information. Dissident groups host their content on Amazon web servers, which encrypts all data passing through it, so sensors don't know what- Dang bro. And was China the best, bro? They're, they seem to be going through some stuff, bro. What traffic is legitimate, and what traffic is from a banned website. They've even adopted a new lingo to confuse sensors while talking on WeChat. Ladder, and Vietnamese faux noodles, is slang for VPN service. The Chinese for narrow neck bottle sounds awfully familiar to Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping. While ZF is short for government. And of course, as bad as cryptocurrency is, which is a story for another time, activists in Hong Kong, Tibet, and Xinjiang have been storing their money in Bitcoin, which cannot be seized, taxed, or... No, Bitcoin of all things. That's why it rose so much, it seems. ...traced back to them. But for the most part, many citizens don't really care. They either don't believe there is an internet outside of their own, or they believe censorship is a good thing to preserve national cohesion. As long as they're comfortable, so they can be protected from Nico Cabo avocado, avocado, right, guys? They don't <laughs> care about politics or the outside world. Whatever side of the Great Firewall you live on, it looks like the grass is always less. As a cool transition, green on the other side. Dang, so YouTubers can't come through and do their like walking the Great Wall of China video right guys we said when he said hey look they, they are even buildings of the holocaust the word disagree it being is banned were so per perfect like the very cops heft is wrong which is of course of course the case i love how uh, one of the strangest things i've experienced in a chinese colleague is being afraid to search things on google afraid she would face punishment 
meant from her own country somehow we lived we were in school in Canada uh, Canada at the time Plague Inc being banned might have been the funniest stuff all day all right guys that's a video like comment subscribe uh, I'd live stream all my reactions on Twitch um, help uh, if you could you know consider helping the channel by you know dropping in or donating check out original creator in the description I'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching man get through it